My name is Dagmar Painter, and I'm the curator of the Jerusalem Fund Gallery Al Quds. Um, I started the gallery in the end of uh, 2000, beginning of 2001, because the Jerusalem Fund, which is a humanitarian and think tank organization, didn't have a visual component, and they decided that that would be something that would be very interesting to add to the offerings of the Jerusalem Fund. Um, so what I do here is present art from Palestinians, Arabs, Arab Americans, and even non-Arabs who have something to say about the Middle East, the Muslim world, the Arab world. Um, I do contemporary art mostly, but also some folk art, um, historical work, and we put on a show about every six weeks throughout the year, so we have a, a very busy schedule. The particular show that I have on at the moment is called Reaching Across the World, and it is a study of hand iconography um, in cultures ranging from Asia through Europe, Middle East, Latin America, Africa, with a specific emphasis on the hand of Fatima. Fatima was um, the, um, the daughter of Khadijah, who was one, the second wife of Muhammad. And the reason that that uh, hand is named after her is um, looked at in numerous ways by scholars. Um, the hand iconography in general has been associated with the Romans and Roman uh, conquering of areas in North Africa, the Middle East, um, ha brought imagery that was similar to the hand. And perhaps, scholars think, it may be related to the concept of Venus. So moving from that to finding imagery of a female who has virtues um, that need to be commemorated, brought the use of the hand in Muslim culture to settle upon Fatima, who was considered uh, a very, very virtuous person and needing to be honored. In other cultures, um, we find a similar iconography. For example, um, there's some relationship to uh, Mary in Christendom, and also there's very strong hand iconography in Hebrew culture, um, in which the hand represents Miriam, who was the sister of Aaron. One of the things we did in this exhibition um, was look at really early origins of the hand. Um, we found that there are hands in um, areas such as Peshmerel in F France, prehistoric hands from about 20,000 BC. There were cave paintings of horses and there were hand palm prints that were, that were placed upon these cave paintings of horses. And the, the research seems to indicate that there was some kind of shamanistic um, uh, approach to using these hand symbols as providing power for the hunters, for example. Um, there are things in Wadi Sera. There are hands found um, in uh, Zimbabwe, in Dumbashara. Um, there are hands found in, in many, many areas um, in the, the prehistoric area. Then we get to the uh, pre-Columbian area. Um, we have, for example, a group called the Mound Builders that were um, pre-Pueblo Indians that were uh, in mostly the Middle West, in Illinois, Indiana, that area. And they created a number of hand symbols um, on physically on caves and also um, designs that were eventually transmuted by other Native American tribes. Hands, for example, with a spiral in the palm. Um, then you have the Navajo who uh, use a particular kind of hand called a, a naka that is um, a horseshoe pattern with hands at the, um, the points of the horseshoe. And that pattern has been shown to have been brought from Spain, from Muslim Spain, um, with basically sort of a horse brass kind of a form that was then again transmuted um, when the Spanish came to uh, that part of the world. Um, interestingly enough, that same form is used in um, Tunisian um, 
necklaces and uh, fibula um, because the same group f uh, from Muslim Spain came across to North Africa and a lot of the silversmiths there simply transmuted that form into Berber forms. So there's all of this kind of relationship. Um, we look at all kinds of things in this exhibition, for example, um, some very tragic uses of the hand. Um, in, um, in India, there is a fort, um, Hangara fort, and um, the women who practiced sooty, the ritual self-immolation to transport themselves and their husbands into the afterlife. Um, when they passed through the gates of the fort, they would place their hennaed palm print on the wall. And later, that palm print was carved into the wall and then anointed with henna and silver uh, leaf, gold leaf and eventually sort of became part of the stone wall. And so there's this very touching monument to this particular kind of sacrifice, but also the concept of the power of that, um, being able to release not only the woman herself, but her husband um, into the, uh, the afterlife. Power is a very important element uh, in terms of this hand iconography. You find it in Latin America. Um, you find it in Mexico with the use of the milagros, which are tiny little forms um, that are for supplication, for thanks, for um, various religious um, blessings um, or help that is needed. And the forms come in, the forms, very many, the forms of hands, other body parts, little books, things that people are asking for. And these little silver charms are placed upon statues of the, of the Virgin Mary, for example, or even columns, pillars in the churches. Um, we find Frida Kahlo, the artist, uh, a lot of images of her uh, show her wearing earrings that are the hand forms, either in the form of Milagros, the tiny ones, or actual big hands of Fatima. Um, as a matter of fact, she was given a pair of, of earrings, uh, hand earrings, by Picasso. Um, we find in Latin America images um, that are called Fica or Fico, and they are um, mainly put on children as uh, protective devices. And there are a different kind of use of the hand. The thumb is placed in, in this, this fashion. Um, again, to protect against the evil eye. Um, we find it in Italy as well. It's a different form slightly. Um, again, something called the malocchio, the, the evil eye. Um, in, in Arabic, um, we have the similar idea, the ayn al-hazard, the eye of the other, um, which is also the reason that you find a lot of eye charms that are associated with the hand that are blue, um, because that is the eye of the other. Um, in a society that was not blue-eyed. And the uh, association between the evil eye and the protective device of the hand and the eye um, is also, takes us all the way back again to the Roman aspect, where um, these images, especially on mosaics, were found associated with serpents or fish, um, which were the symbol of the male, the hand being a triangular form, symbol of the female, and so you find, for example, in the wedding souks in Tunisia, you'll find fish with hands dangling from them made of felt or sequins, very highly decorative. And these were given with wedding gifts to protect both the bride and the groom. Um, smaller versions of these were put on baby cribs and carved into trousseau chests, for example. So it appears in architecture. Um, one of the gates of the Alhambra in Spain has a big hand carved. Um, there are just so many, many multiple uses of the hand with, with different cultures but with similar meaning.